It's the Stank of the South podcast. <laughs> Today we talk SEC football, why Mark Rick shouldn't have been fired. Then we talk a little bit of TWSAA playoff action, Marion County in the state championship. How well will they do? Alcoa Pummel's another Chattanooga area team. Sound familiar? We'll talk about that and more in the 3A football gap. Don't talk about it much, but pro football is uh, kind of the craze now. Panthers being undefeated, Broncos winning against the Patriots, and Peyton Manning's future? Hey, go Vols. Also in the Valley, the Sequatchie Valley it is, we talk about basketball. Boys County okay, taking a step back. Sequatchie County, a dark horse for the boys and the girls. Van Buren ready for a state tourney repeat on both sides. Marion County, the most underrated team in the Chattanooga area with the basketball. All that more on the Stink in the South podcast. Y'all listen up now, you hear? And sorry for that brief moment of quietness. I didn't see that I was muted. Uh, this is Chandler Morrison with the Stang of the South podcast, uh, live from, well, um, the UTC library here. I'm using their studio today, and it is a pretty nice studio, soundproof, got all this nice equipment uh, and video and everything that you want to see there. Um, how y'all done if you're watching the video here? But, <laughs> you know, I look on ESPN, I look at all these, you know, things. Uh, and I see, you know, everybody bashing Georgia. Everybody saying, look, what, what's the deal? And then I saw Mark Rick being fired. Fired? How do you fire a coach that averages nine wins? I mean, really? How do, how do you do that? that that's, that's the question. How, how do you fire a coach who has nine wins? You, you can't really do that. I mean, I mean, you can. They did it. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm just saying, where's the logic there? He was a player or two away from the national championship in 2012. I mean, literally, he was that close. That close. 15 seconds. They're going to get two throws to the end zone. They can clock this ball right now, meaning ground it, or they can run a hurry-up play. The clock has started. 12 seconds to go. Murray got it, but the clock is running. That's the one thing he didn't want to do. Game over. Alabama faces Notre Dame. And you can't tell me Notre Dame would have won against Georgia. No. No. Bama blew them out. Forty, I think it's forty-two, fourteen, something like that. It was it was such a blowout. I fell asleep. I don't ever fall asleep. I don't ever fall asleep for college football. I fell asleep in that game. I took me a good nap. Woke up, did everything else, but that was just a boring game to watch. Okay, you, you can't tell me that Georgia wouldn't beat Notre Dame. You can't tell me that Georgia is not that close to being a national champion that year. They're a play away. And I know what you're saying. You know, it's it, it's one of these things you look at football, you're like, that's just how the cards fell. It is. But when you're looking at this whole grand scheme of things, Georgia, you... Didn't make the right decision. Vince Dooley. They were talking to him the other day. Quote from him. So, uh, who are you looking to hire? Who who, who are some prospective candidates? Well, Mark Rick would be the first one I'd look at. That's how good of a coach he is. You're looking over, you're like, uh, huh? He just said that? Why? Why? I mean, I, I just don't understand sometimes the, the, the things that go behind this. It, it just, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, you look at that game. They're four yards away, four yards away from getting to the national championship back in 2012. Of course, that's, that's three years ago. Of course, that's fine. But he's been consistent. And football's not all about wins. Let me tell you something. Football's not all about wins. He built players. Okay, as a conservative Christian, I'll go ahead and tell you. You look over this guy, and he's constantly sharing his testimony with people. He's constantly building young men, grooming young men. And every program has their bad players. Every program has their criminal players. That That's just par for the course. You know, I'm not saying every player that's come out of Georgia is perfect. But over the, the big scheme, over the long haul, yeah, he's done a pretty good job there. 
I mean, my God. He was on Facing the Giants. He was featured in Facing the Giants. How are you feeling? I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, it's a championship. I, it's kind of surreal for me. Yeah. Well, I can promise you, I don't care what level of ball you're coaching, it's, it's surreal when you make it to the championship game. How can you fire a coach that was on Facing the Giants? How? How? The movie that gave us the stone wall? How can you do that? How can you fire the coach? He's not kicking it! Brock! Brock! One more down! One more down! It's fourth down and the Giants are going for the touchdown. This crowd is going absolutely berserk right now. They line up at the one yard line. West Porter's going to take the snap. They're going to run it. Brock Kelly's going to get him head on and there's a fumble! There's a fumble! The Eagles have a football! They're taking it back down the field! Have you ever seen that movie? If you're seeing that scene, if you watch that scene, I want you to go look at the Stonewall scene on YouTube. Because you'll look and you'll say, wow. That looks like Whitwell in uh, Signal Mountain. It's reminiscent of uh, Whitwell Signal Mountain, just the way it looks on the field. And that team that's got like 80 plus players. It reminded me of the uh, 2A title game back in, gosh, 2010. That was 2010. They went and they played Trinity Christian. Trinity Christian was no match for them. They played them pretty even. It's like 28, 28 the halftime. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. And you look over and you're like, Signal, and then Signal Mountain just goes and blows them out. I think it's like 52, 28 the rest of the game. I mean, it's just ungodly how good they were. Of course, that was a 4A program in a 2A division. Never should have been there. I think the next year they went up to 4A. And no, they didn't go up to 3A. But the only reason they didn't go up to 3A is because they didn't want to face Alcoa. Let's just be blunt. Uh, let's just be front and honest with it. They didn't want to play Alcoa. No one wants to play Alcoa. I mean, really, no one wants to play Alcoa. Who signed up to go play Alcoa? Red Bank. Red Bank went and signed up to play Alcoa. Holy, my, God Almighty! But it reminded me of the Signal Mountain Whitwell game. Seventy-five nothing. Seventy-five nothing. Okay, let me tell you something. Signal Mountain at that point was very, very good. And, of course, I think eventually people caught on that maybe they were recruiting just a tad. I was talking to someone the other day where I work. I work at Chick-fil-A on Gun Barrel. I was talking to someone the other day, and they are like, I was like, you know, I, you know the connotation that comes with you. He's like, yeah, we recruit. And he said, we're not as good anymore because we don't recruit as much. <laughs> you have one of the players, you, not, not a player, but you have one of the students say that. They do it. Everybody knew it. I mean, it's just how it went. When you, you when you play South Pittsburgh, who at that time was a dominating team with Vic Grider and all the talent they always have, when you beat them 65-35 and you're 2A and they're 1A, there's something wrong. There, there's some recruiting going on. There's some different things going on. But we got to talk about the talent gap in 3A. We've got to. Alcoa being Alcoa. They beat Notre Dame 42-4. Or 42-2, excuse me. <laughs> and for being from the Sequatchie Valley, I don't I don't particularly like private schools. I don't. And and maybe my maybe I don't like Notre Dame as much as I should. I'm not gonna say whether I like them or not, even though I kinda already did. But you you had to feel sorry for them. Or kinda, not really. You look at you look. It's just a three A. I mean, you feel sorry for them because you feel sorry for Sequatchie County over there. And Sequatchie County, by the way, lost thirty eight nothing to Notre Dame at Finley Stadium back in the first round of the playoffs. Notre Dame beat them thirty eight nothing, and you're looking at it, you're like, man, they have to go to state. There 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 are other state contenders. They go next week, beat up from same score. Okay, they're state contenders. They're going to state. <clears throat> Go on the play East Ridge, beat East Ridge. All right, boom. Let's book the ticket. Alcoa, not so fast. Lee Corso saying, not so fast. You know, you, you look over and you're like, this 3A gap. There's, there's a 3A gap, and I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Sequatchie County and Grundy County are probably the two least likely teams to ever get a state championship. In football, at least. 
And the reason I say that is not because, you know, not because, you know, Sequatchie County's not good. And I think I think Grundy County can be as good as Sequatchie County eventually. I've got faith in Tate. Faith in Casey Tate. Okay. I mean, he, he came in the latter part of that season, they got better. And Grundy County is known for being one of these teams that gets better as the season goes on. And he did get better. He, he was going toe-to-toe with the number seven team in Class 3A, what we thought at the time was. Still impressive. I think he keeps his job. I think he goes in the next year. If he doesn't have a uh, you know a five-win season, I think he's out. Just because Grundy County fans and Grundy County politics are kind of weird and kind of hostile. But I think he's got another year. But but go on over to Squatch County. I don't think that it's that it's necessarily Kane. I mean, Kane does a good job with what he does. Kane does a good job with that program. And he does a great job. And I'll tell you why. He has success with this program for one reason. Here it is. Get after somebody. I've got a motto, and it's it's if you want to play, make me play. You don't come. It's not, it, my motto does not say on the back of that shirt. It does not say if you want to play, get your parents to come talk to me. That's not what it says. It says if you want to play, make me play you. And if you get in a scrimmage and start competing with people, that's how I will I will play. Maybe a lot of people don't realize that when when you talk about you know Sequatchie County. When you when you talk about the football program, many people don't realize the parents are involved a little bit too much. And I, if no one else is saying it, I will. Over the past few years, people have been involved. The parents have been involved with it way too much. They're playing daddy ball. I played for Squatchy County two years. I mean, honestly, it, it's just one of these things where you look over and you're like, huh? You know, I mean, I, I just... I just don't understand. Sometimes, I mean, I was on that team, and and it was, and they started playing daddy ball. They started, you know, getting, you know, I guess you could say, a little bit complacent, a little bit. I don't really want to. Uh, <laughs> I don't really want to uh, do that. I don't really, really want to do what that coach is saying. I don't really do. And, and Coach Barger, I loved Coach Barger when he was there. Uh, you know, he was a great. Great coach, uh, you know you could you could stand stand straight up and look right over him. Never seen him. He's short, but Coach Barger, he was a great coach. And I, you know, all the coaches that I had, Coach Montgomery, my probably my favorite coach of all time, Coach Sam Montgomery. And if you ever see him, tell him stink, said hello. Uh, that's that's what he gave me, or Hawkeye, whatever you want to call me. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's I, I I love those coaches. But but the the problem was. In those teams, I remember we lost sixty-one nothing. My junior year, we lost sixty-one to nothing. My senior year, or my junior year, excuse me, to Signal Mountain. And yes, Signal Mountain's talented. But after the game, Coach Barco over there said, "Look, we're playing daddy ball. We we can't we can't we can't do that." And we were, we were playing daddy ball, or everybody else was. I was still within the program. I. I didn't play a whole lot, so I can't really say anything. But you look over, and everybody was – they weren't looking to Coach Barr. They weren't looking to these coaches saying, all right, this is what we're going to do. No. It was – we lost, and that was how it went. That's just how it was. Right now, we're going to take a break. And by the way, before I go back to break, I want to say that Coach Kane is doing an excellent job. That's what he's doing. He's taking the – you know, he, he's taking – this program, and he's he's molding it away from the day. But I was trying to get the parents. I mean, he wants parents involved, but not in a direct way. Not in okay, my kid's gonna play or my kid's not gonna play. That's just how that's just how he is, and the, and you heard that right there. We'll be right back after this break. This is Sean Cooley, Let Him, featuring Illuminate. We'll be right back after this break. Never made a move without a reason. Why? Cause I gotta be ready to defend. 
my work, 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 work. And everybody working for the season. But I'm in it for the long haul. Double up, never cut, that's all y'all not mine. Drop high lines when I write my verse. Double dutch on the course and the limelight. I can buy the anybody that wanna get a piece of this and you really need it. Quit eventually you see that all my enemies get done up. One up, work from night till sun up. Finding these rappers and all of them about to get sun up. Hold up. You can catch me on the road, alright? Let them talk and let them hate, cause it gets sold, alright? Got a finger for the critics I can show, alright? So when we come back to the city, we gon' go all night. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate, let them, let them, let them, let them, look, yeah. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate. I'm just trying to be the dope, I'm just trying to make a way. I'm just trying to be the one, doing something that they can't. I'm just trying to let that money talk, I'm trying to break the bank. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate. I'm just trying to be the dope, I'm just trying to make a way. I'm just trying to be the one, doing something that they can't. I'm just trying to let that money talk, I'm trying to break the bank. Back in it like an ad lib, get it? No cap, I can slap bills, fit it? No doubt, I can match kills. Living at it, running back like a backfield smith. Damn it, what you know about a kid from the six? It was life and never calling me a hit. They got a ride, never red, nigga, they can tell that. Cause I eat my beats, cornbread mix. I'm, 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 I'm on fire. My flow need a fire, fire. I've never been the type of rogue green, smoke breeze. To get wild, blown, I don't need a bonsai. Let me get it a promise, I get a pop and a pop of it on the top of a rap and a running like a Give me another hit, I'm gonna be there, let me be clear, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Back with a rap, got a nag for the facts, I'm that representing in the back of the class. I'll rap and I'll make them bloom black on the track, I got drop booked like a candy they lack. A real individual reaching this pinnacle, then I'm a blow. Yeah, I be spiritual, kill every syllable, leave them like a Yes, man, I be that kid who be rapping, white skin, make you wanna have this habit. Total package, present for the laughter, but now they ain't laughing, then I'ma give the rapper. But it really don't matter, I put them on my platter, I send them up streaming at a paddle. But I'm still hungry, so I'm eating every rapper. Never mind, I call them actors, never mind, I call them faggots. My bad is that's offensive. See, the thing is, I can't apologize, I can't turn back, I'm already 20 bars in it. Y'all need a triple beam to find the balance. Y'all don't understand that this is war, so what you doing bringing that weak ammo to the battle? I've been chilling all day. Let them talk, let them hate, let them, let them, let them, let them. Let them, let them. I've been chilling all day. Let them talk, let them hate, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them, let them. yeah. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate. I'm just trying to be the dopest, I'm just trying to make a way. I'm just trying to be the one, doing something that they can't. I'm just trying to let that money talk, I'm trying to break the bank. I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate. I'm just trying to be the dopest, I'm just trying to make a way. I'm just trying to be the one, doing something that they can't. I'm just trying to let that money talk, I'm trying to break the bank. And we're back on the Stank of the South podcast. December 2nd, 2015 is the date. It's a Wednesday, in case you're tuning in at a later date. I'm Chandler Morrison, and uh, we just talked about a little bit of uh, Tito Bus to play football. But you know what I really want to talk about? Marion County. Marion County. State championship, yet again. And... and at the beginning of the season, if I told you that, you might not be surprised. But the middle of the season, after Boyd Buchanan beat Marion County, you might be looking at me like, mm, I don't know about that. I, I can't see that. I, I just don't see that happening. I just, no. No. Marion County, no. Boyd Buchanan, all the way. Most complete team. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Boy, Buchanan and I not have the most complete team, but they were in the most complete region. I'll tell you that much. How did Marion kind of get there? You know, you, you look over at this team, and they just had the win win this day, win the day philosophy. And it's cliche, it's corny, but you know what? When it's when you do it right, when you do it the way it's supposed to be done, like Ricky Ross does it, it works. You win state championships. That's just how it goes. 
I, I just don't understand how some people, you know, they see, they're like, oh, that'll never work. Da, da, da. I want to do something new. I want to have a new philosophy. Well, if you do the old philosophy right, it'll work. It'll do what you need it to do. And people don't realize that. People want new. They want something different. They want to get the edge through, you know, these around the box, this, that, blah, blah, blah. No. You can do that. I mean, sure. Some people do it. I mean, you had SMU. They had the run shoot offense, the wind debt. You had Oregon that innovated the spread. But you talk about doing, you know, the wing T is as old as, God, I don't even know how old it is. It's probably one of the earliest, you know, besides the single eye, it's probably one of the oldest high school systems, I would say. And I'm not that well qualified to answer that. Not well qualified to answer that. But I would say that, yeah, maybe, uh, Maybe that's one of the oldest. But when you run it right, it works. When you put the system in place, it works. When you run the triple option out of the wing tee and you do it right, it works and it gets you to the state championship. Sequatchie County. We'll go back mm, 2010. I know I bring up Sequatchie County a lot. I'm a Sequatchie County alumni. I played there my junior and senior year, just in case you're wondering, in football. Go back to my freshman year, 2010. Hunter Lewis. Had over a thousand yards, three thousand yard rushers on the team. Why? Wing T. Wing T. Wing T offense out of the triple option. Marion County's running it to a T. And they're getting a little bit more. I'm not gonna say spread. But they're getting a little bit more innovative. They're getting they're getting some plays in there. They're going a little bit wider. They they got they're starting to get some more athletes in there. You know. And, and and to say that when they're at the state championship right now is, is very, 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 very ironic. But, you know, I, I think what's going to happen here is you're going to see Marion County, they're, they're doing a great job. And after that, and after, and I, by the way, but after that Boyd Buchanan loss, um, of course they lost Walters too, but Walters came back. Walters came back the last game of the season, and he's led them to the state championship where they are now. And, you know, I, I find it very, very – it's a very cool story. I wrote a feature on River City Sports in case you're uh, listening and want to see that. Go to River City Sports and look up uh, the uh, last article I wrote, which was um, two quarterbacks plus character equals state title appearance. And it talks about how, you know, Massengale was the quarterback last year. He's still on that team. A lot of people don't realize – he. everybody thinks he's graduated because Walters is there now, but he never graduated. He's still there. It's his senior, it's his senior season, and he was bound and determined. He was actually – considered to be the starting quarterback when he came in no questions asked watchers come in he's an alabama transfer came in from stevenson alabama goes in there and he goes mm. you know and, and he says i'm going to do what i need to do and basically what he said was it was hard at first but once he got the gist of it he was he was taking a run you know and i think he and, and ricky ross said you know he gives some more things to our package yeah he does i, I think he's a better i guess just top speed get around the corner runner than massingale was I don't say Massengale didn't do a great job, but for Massengale to step back and say, you know what, this is what's best for the team, I'll go into a more of a utility role. And that's what the coaches told him you know, to do. And he said, yeah, I'll do that. I'll go into a more of a controlled utility role. That's what I'll do. No problem. And for him to do that, that, that means that team got the state championship, and that was the character of that team to say, look, we're going to do whatever we need to do. A lot of people say, yeah, we'll do whatever we need to do to win, but when it gets tough, they're like, uh, I don't know. It's not in their comfort zone. Uh, I don't know. But for them to actually go out there and say, you know, we are going to do whatever it takes to get to the state championship. And Massengill stepped down from a starting quarterback position. He probably could have been recruited a lot more as a quarterback. I'll be honest with you. He's going to lose some recruiting points. He's going to lose a lot of that. But you know what? He won a state championship, and that if that matters to him more than, than winning a quarterback, when getting a quarterback position somewhere in college, power to him. That is great. That is that is spectacular. You know, and, and a lot of people are just like, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Well, you might not be able to do it, but he did. He did. Mason Gill, great character, great guy. Walters, great character, great guy. He had a little bit more skill than Massengill. Massengill saw that. He said, look, you're you're better fit for this team. You do it. And, of course, Ricky Ross had that decision to make. It wasn't just them two. It was Ricky Ross's decision. But you know what? For for him to just accept that and say, we're going to do whatever we need to do to win, power to him. There might be some – there still might be some, you know, bad blood between two. That's, that's, that's how it goes. When you have two quarterbacks going – they're gonna they're gonna like each other because they're on the same team, but also they're gonna hate each other because they gotta play they gotta compete against each other. 
But, you know, I think that's what got them there. And by the way, Marion County has an excellent, excellent relationship with Sequatchie County and other Sequatchie Valley teams. Mar- Bledsoe County, great relationship with them. Uh, South Pittsburgh, uh, well, I, I can't say it's a great relationship. Uh, you know, Ricky Ross being at South Pittsburgh for a stint of time before going over to Marion County. So I would say there's no love lost there. Makes it makes the rivalry more intense, I would say. And in case you've never heard Ricky Ross, this is him last year. Uh, after the, or before the Peabody game, the state championship. Just so you can kind of understand how, how he talks. He talks uh, very, very like a coach should. This is this is how a, a coach should give a press conference right here. This is how a high school coach should give a press conference and, and do it right. Yeah, certainly. You know, I think you got to eliminate the big play. They're a big play football team, you know, and I, I think that goes with most spread teams trying to get people in space, and that creates big plays. So we got to eliminate big plays. We got to win the battle up front, both sides. We got to have ball security, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll play good football and chips will fall where they may. If you talk to him long enough, he'll give you some great quotes. That's cliche stuff. If you keep talking and talking and talking, eventually he'll give you something. And, and most coaches, they just want to give you cliche answers, da da da. Well, this is what happened, da da da. They don't want to give you nothing more. Ross, you know, he knows. If you're if you're searching for that story, he'll give you that story. But you got to search for it. I, I write, you know, I, I write a lot of articles for River City Sports. Uh, shout out to John Neal, my boss, if you're listening. Um, he's done a great job with River City Sports, building it up. And uh, we, we've all we've all put a hand in that, trying to build it up and build that brand. Um, so, by the way, go visit River City Sports if you get a chance. And uh, look at some of the articles. Uh, actually, we just uh, published some uh, Wednesday morning for, for the games this past Tuesday, including Van, uh, including a recap for the Van Buren versus Whitwell, uh, Baylor versus Walker Valley, I believe, and um, several other games, several other games, I believe. But uh, they're always putting stuff out. We are, we are always putting stuff out for this uh for River City Sports. So go ahead and check that out if you get a chance. So, um, you know, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about Marion County. Okay. Um, <laughs> with, with with Marion County, they're, they're just in a tough region. And, and, Squ- and we'll go back to the Sequatchie Valley, you know, relationships with the coaches. Adam Kane and, and uh, Ricky Ross have very, very great relationship with each other. You know, it, it came down to, you know, I was at a scrimmage. I think I was at a actually a passing league, or maybe it was a scrimmage. I think it was both. They played twice. They played in a passing league and a scrimmage, uh, Marion County, Squatch County, because they don't really play, they don't play each other in the regular season. They didn't play each other on the schedule. You know, so uh, they were sitting there, and you you look over and you're like, wow, wow, because Ricky Ross is the kind of guy he'll walk over there, he'll go, and he'll he'll be in the middle of a scrimmage, and he'll yell, he'll point at the opposing quarterback and say, do that thing you just did again. So he can show this team. And when you don't play somebody in the regular season, you can do that. You can go and do this. You can go and do that. Now, I know it's on a two-year basis, okay? And it's every you know every two years they have to decide whether they're going to play each other. It, it's, it, it's too much of an advantage for Adam Kane and too much of an advantage for Ricky Ross for them, to, for them not to schedule each other. It's too much. It's just way too much of an advantage not to play each other because they can go and they can practice that. They could probably, if they wanted to, they could probably. I mean, their scrimmages, their their scrimmages are not scrimmages. They're they're modified practices, is what they are. You'll see that. Uh, you know, and I watched the scrimmage this year, and we were we were trying to do it on radio, but you couldn't see what was going on because it was more of, a, and we didn't know this, but uh, we were it was more of a modified scrimmage than anything else. And, and just <laughs> you looking at you are like, huh, what? Why? By the way, that region that Marion County is in, Boyd Buchanan, it's the toughest region in the state. You can't tell me it's not. For Marion County to come out of that and go, mm, we're going to win state. They were going to win state. We knew from the very beginning that it was going to be the toughest region, first of all. Because not you had two, I think you had, okay, you had Brainerd, you had Tyner, you had Bledsoe County, and I believe you had Polk County. Polk County, yes, all dropped down from 3A down to 2A. That made it that much more competitive, okay. Plus, you had a state champion, a private school who's been to the state championship a couple times. You've got a tradition and building very, very nicely. You look over and you're like, how is that? How, what, what, why? And it's one of the toughest districts you'll see. It is the toughest district in the state, I believe, in Class 2A and maybe 
one of the top five in the state overall. You know, I, and I, <laughs> it amazes me. It amazes me. You've got all these one horse districts or one horse regions, and I just don't. There's no. There's no point to them. There's no reason to have them. And I think that's the way you do it. I think that's the way you try to build a program. You try to build a region. Is is this going to be competitive? And you know, sometimes the, the football in an area is not very competitive. You got one team that over, and that's fine. But when they built this region, you got to think they were thinking. Let's see. Uh, let's see two teams get out of this, and one team not be mad. Let me tell you something. Four teams made it out, okay? And Bledsoe County got in there by the skin of their teeth. They went and played Forrest, who was the number five AP ranked at the end of the season, number five AP ranked in the first round. Play them twenty eight thirteen. Close game, very very close game at Forrest, no less. Forrest was destined to lose to Marion County in the second round. We all knew that, but. Wouldn't have been great. Wouldn't have been great to see Marion County play Bledsoe County again and have all four from that region in. I mean, they were, they were about two touchdowns away from being there. And 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 by the way, Bledsoe County most underrated football team in that re, in that region. It, they kind of go unnoticed. Okay, they kind of go unnoticed. And, and the reason I say that is is because they go in there, they do their job, and they're just this hard nosed team. They're just this hard nosed team. That, that's all there is. And, and they do their job. And, and by the way, Josh Owensby done a great, great job. Great job there at that program. I, I was very, very impressed in his first year what he did after taking over. I mean, of course, it was the same. He was the offense coordinator. And uh, Jason Real stepped up to an athletic director position, and then he stepped up. So it wasn't really a big change. But still, for him to come in as a first-year head coach and get that done, hats off to him. I want to congratulate them on the great season. I do. Just just because they, they deserve it. I think they got gypped out. Uh, I think they could have gone to the second round had they had a better placement. And, and had they played, Forrest was the number one team. Think about that. They played them very, very nicely. Now, if they would have played the number two team, they would have been in the second round. No, no questions asked. No questions asked. And I think if they had been in any other region, they would have got the number two seed at least. At least the number two seed. Maybe, maybe the number one seed. I'm not saying that, but they would at least get the two seed. You know, they wouldn't have been a four seed in any other district. They would have been the two seed. Hats off to Bledsoe County, by the way. And, and Marion County, hats off to you for being the state champion or going to the state championship. And hopefully being a state champion. I would love to see that over Memphis Trezident. That game, 11 o'clock this Saturday at Cookville. That is central time, I do believe. Uh, at Cookville at Tennessee Tech, uh, I should be there. I'll be covering it. I don't know if I'll be on the radio, but I'll be covering it, um, or should be. And uh, that'll be a great game to watch against Memphis Trezevent, who uh, beat Trinity Christian, uh, who has been in the state championship before, and uh, should be a great matchup. And, and the one I love about the state championship in 2A is that you have these uh, West Tennessee teams and these East Tennessee teams that don't ever play each other, don't ever get the chance to play each other. And so it's really a toss-up. It really is the true definition of a toss-up, except for like the Division II teams who all play each other. It's really, really a toss-up, uh, honestly. It's gonna, it's kind of hard to, to guess who's going to win or who's going to do that. So that makes it that much more interesting of a game. Mary Kane didn't know who Peabody was from Adam last year. Uh, and, of course, Peabody won. And I'm not sure if Mary Kane's going to win this game this year just because I don't know where Trezevant ranks up against everybody else. I don't know how great – as you go west, as you go out from Chattanooga up to Knoxville, out to Nashville, out to Memphis, the, the football gets better, it looks like. But uh, Memphis is is the epitome of, of Tennessee football. But Mary County making a run at that and trying to pull that energy back to the Chattanooga area, I believe. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk pro football and some high school football in the Sequatchie Valley coming up for you here in just a minute, this is Haters by No Shame featuring Sean Cooley. This is the Stang of the South podcast. We'll be right back. DJ Swift. Say rabbit in the Christian world's wrong. Put Billy Graham on that pulpit. Thumbs will change culture. We'll change the way. Go ahead and put your records on. Cause we'll have them for too long. Before long, we'll all be gone. Life's too short to agon on. So go ahead and get your altar on. Cause we gotta get down and pray. 
Let the Lord show his way. Put it on a remix, no chains, two hits. Trying to get the world to read the gospel, get everybody out of off. We're gonna bring peace, we might fight. Just two kids trying to change the world. Get a church pew and give it a world. Got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on. And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us. Why don't you take the call? They don't like us at all. They too scared of who we was. Let's show them what love does. Got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on. And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us. Why don't you take the call? They don't like us at all. They too scared of who we was. Let's show them what love does. Haters. Haters like Darth Vader, drop the beat and mix those faders. We ain't clubbing, we down south. Get a bonfire and roll around. Seeing kumbaya as the sun goes down. Got dirt rolls, no downtown. Got butter rolls and that twang sound. Got an old scoop. Brand of from, from Baptist to Pentecostal, been around the world. Our God's still awesome. We ain't playing dead like an old possum. We got all these blessings and no problems. If I had 99, he'd take every one. Bring about day, but he's the sun. Think I'm through? <laughs> I barely begun. Got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us Why don't you take the call, they don't like us at all They're too scared of who we was, let's show them what love does Got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us Why don't you take the call, they don't like us at all they hated on me, I'm still here With the same vision that's still clear I'm gifted in it like St. Nicholas Take a flight like one of them reindeer I'm just playing around with that cheesy line There's more to rhymes, there's more to life Got a slingshot in my right hand Take a shot to it, have a good life Talk. Back, back, back on that track, winning in from a splat I thank God for providing my heart and my soul I've been climbing my way to the top And they know I've been grinding My time is about to unfold No forgive on they don't know what they do And every single thing I own, I owe it all up to you, great Got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us Why don't you take the call, they don't like us at all They too scared of who we was, let's show them what love does Got, got them haters on the phone, they don't know what's going on And they keep hating on us, and they keep hating on us Why don't you take the call, they don't like us at all They too scared of who we was, let's show them what love does And we're back with the Sting of the South podcast. I'm Chandler Morrison. And uh, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Now we're going to talk about some pro football, I guess. I'm not a big fan of pro football, honestly. I'm not. I'm more of a college football, high school football type guy. And I've turned into a high school football type guy from have, going into journalism um, and, and seeing high school. And it's kind of revamped my interest in high school football, which I had when I was kind of like a freshman, sophomore in high school. And then I start playing football, and your interest kind of goes down by the day, and then you look over, and, and then it just kind of revamped that interest, which is great, which I love uh, about this uh, about this job, is that it revamps my interest in sports on a daily basis. Pro football. Panthers being undefeated. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Cam Newton, just a class act guy. I don't care what, what how he celebrates. I don't care. It's the NFL. Okay, it, it's it's the NFL. You can celebrate. This is not college football. This is not the college football where Miami kept everybody else from celebrating. I don't know if you ever watched the U. You ever watched the U? Great, great documentary, by the way. And I'm a good, I'm a big fan of sports documentaries just because I'm a sports journalist. But if you're ever ever get to watch a, a, a sports documentary, make sure make sure that sports documentary is the you. Okay. Make sure that's the first one you watch because it will show you how how you how you build a, about a program. It'll show you how a college football program works. And a lot and a lot of people don't realize that. Um but but I, I just want to say in 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 that film it shows you how how they did everything they did and, and they lost it basically the the rule book was about you know you know celebrations and all that was made from miami from miami 
and there's a there's a tidbit in there. I wish I had a soundbite for that, but there's a tidbit in there about Miami, um, and, and they were talking about how <laughs> how the how when the NCAA they sent this video out to every school to show them what was what was uh, acceptable and what was not as far as the celebration, and for the unacceptable part, it was a Miami football highlight reel. Is basically what it was. I mean, it was just hilarious, hilarious. And you know, I talk about pro football. I'm not mad at Cam Newton. I, I think he's a class act guy just for all the stuff he does. I mean, he goes and talks to a cancer patient. He gets the. I mean, on on the field, he goes and takes the ball after one of the other players from the team. I can't remember what team they're playing. Takes the ball, takes the ball from that player after he threw it away, trying to get it away from Cam. It takes it and gives it to a fan out in the stands. What if the quarterback does that? He's a class act guy, and I, I've seen that since the day he was at Auburn. He 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 he, he kind of has this rem, uh, reminiscence, uh, redundancy of Tebow, Christian guy. I mean, he's he's not. I guess he's not as much of a celebrity Christian as Tebow was, and not saying anything wrong being a celebrity Christian. I think that's great. I think you get to show the world, you know, hey, look, I'm a, I'm a celebrity. I'm a Christian, and you you know that, and that's what I do. I'll talk about Tebow here in a minute. But but Cam Newton, he's just a class that guy. And and for that team to come together like it is, I hope they go undefeated. I hope they do. Just despite the Patriots. Just despite the Patriots. I'm not a big Patriots fan. I hope they do. Because the Patriots are like, oh, we're going to go undefeated. We're going to go undefeated. I don't know how the Boston accent works. Sorry. We're going to go undefeated. Boston. Boston, we're going to go undefeated. No. Broncos ruined that for you. And talking about that game, I, I didn't watch the game. But just to see that score, and I kind of watched, I kind of looked at the summary. I, I just don't watch NFL games anymore. I, I just look at the summary to see what they say. And I look at the highlight reels. And just looking at that, that was that was a great game. And for them to come back and win it like that. And by the way, and th- this goes into my next thing, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's future I'm not a Broncos fan, by the way. I'm not. I'm a Manning fan, which is which is what a lot of people from Tennessee are, uh, and a lot of people from Indianapolis are still Peyton Manning fans. You'll see a lot of people that are just Peyton Manning fans, and that's what that's that's what they do. I am. You don't see that a lot with Tom Brady, though. You're a Patriots fan. You're a Tom Brady fan. You're you're not a Tom Brady fan. You're a Patriots fan. Where will Peyton end up? I, I think what he's doing right now. I think he's just trying to play. He his mind thinks I can play. He keeps going. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. But looking at the numbers, looking at what he's doing, he's just not ready. I think I think he wanted to get that record, honestly, and then his body just gave out. He wanted his body wanted him to get that record, and then he just gave out. You, you know, and I feel for the man. I I do. I do. You know, to have surgery and come back from that surgery and almost win a Super Bowl with with another team. Golly, that's amazing. That's amazing. Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. He's been on the news for, you know, his model girlfriend. I can't remember what her name is. That's not important. And, and I, I'll tell you something. I, I'm... I'm for Tebow in all aspects. I'm in the same boat he is. Of course, I'm not a celebrity. But I'm the same boat he is. People, um, people just don't understand. People don't understand that. That you know, you can that a man, women, people don't understand that a man can not want to have sex and want to save himself from marriage. It's just like women think it's impossible for a man to think like that. And if they are, it's because they don't really have the opportunity. And when women see a good-looking man like Tebow, and I'll say it and no one else will, when women see a good-looking man like Tebow, pretty handsome feller, when they see that, they're like, uh, well, uh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that he would do that. I think he's lying. Everybody thought he was lying when he said that. Back a couple years ago in his press conference, they asked him about his you know, business in the bedroom. He said, no, I'm saving myself for marriage. No one could believe it. No one could believe a, a college quarterback at a SEC school, at a big, huge D1 FBS level school, a national championship team, no one could believe that he hadn't been laid. No one. 
No one couldn't, couldn't believe that he didn't want to until he was married. Now, let me say something. Guys are, are automatically wired for that, okay? I will say that. But you have when you're a guy and you're a Christian, you have to hold that in until you're married. And I'm in the same boat Tebow is. People don't understand that. They're like, you, you don't want that? Why wouldn't you want that? I'm saving myself. Just like Tebow said that. He's, he's like saving himself. And this is the second relationship that's happened that way. You know what? I, I think Tebow, I, I, I'm for Tebow, but there, there's something he's got to do. He's got to look for a woman that's not maybe, it's not a celebrity. He's got to look for a woman that is, you know, his type. He's got to look for a woman that's willing to do the same thing he is and willing to look past what he is uh, and look past all the things people are saying about him and be able to be his wife or his, his, his girlfriend for a long time. That's what he needs to do. And I'm not I'm not trying to get in his personal affairs. I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I don't think I don't I don't know the guy from Adam. You know, I don't walk over there and, and say, Hey Tim, how you doing? Hey Tim, how you doing? No. No, I don't do that. I don't know him. But I will say this, that's probably something he needs to work on. Probably something he needs to work on. High school basketball in the Squatchy Valley. This is gonna end the hour right here. Um but <laughs> it's gonna go at the top of the hour right here. But the Sequatchie Valley basketball, it's coming alive. It is. Well, let's talk about Bledsoe County first. And the reason I want to talk about Bledsoe County, they got a new coach. Last year they got to a uh, region, uh, which for them was a letdown. You had a group of five seniors. Coach Mark Cable, Cagle, excuse me, was there. Awesome, awesome team. I mean, I, I went to watch that team. Taylor Warden. Taylor Warden last year. He could literally throw a ball up from half court and it go in. He was the jimmer for debt of the Sequatchie Valley. He was the jimmer for debt of the Sequatchie Valley. I was talking to the radio guys over there, um, Mike and Bradley, and they were saying, you know, we were watching, you know, and, and this is a game I went to. I think it was in the playoffs. Uh, this is a game I went to, and he was like, yeah, uh, like like a uh, game against CCS, they went over there and he he threw two up from uh, behind the half court line. They both went in. It wasn't game altering, no, but it was impressive to watch. He just chunks them and he can get them in. People people don't believe me when I say he's the Jimmer for debt of of high school basketball. He is. He can just shoot the lots out of a ball. He can just shoot it. But but let me say, she had five seniors and they were all talented seniors. Okay. And that team was destined to get to sectionals, at least. That team was destined to go to at least the state tournament. But there was also another team that was destined to go to the state tournament. And that was Central. And that was Brainerd. You look over and you're like, man. Man. Wow. And what's okay, I didn't lose to those teams. Notre Dame didn't lose to those teams. Notre Dame came out of that district in, into the region, and they played these teams. They played these teams from District 8, which are always very, very competitive, very, very great teams, you know, going into the region. You, you know that any team in, in District 7 AA, which, which is Signal Mountain, Notre Dame, CCS, Grundy County, Sequatchie County, Bledsoe County, you know when you're going into that district. You know. You, you're gonna, you, you have to get through District 8 if you want to get anywhere. If you can get through District 8, there's a pretty good chance you can get to the state championship. Pretty good chance. I remember a couple of years ago, Squatch County. Daniel Cartwright, Keegan Frederick, a load of talent. A load of talent. Got the sectionals, okay? Squatchy County teams, because Squatchy Valley teams can make a run with basketball. They have in the past. Watson County, Squatch County, they both made a run in the past. There's just this, this apex. You can't get past... You know, you get past District 8. And, and here's the thing. I think you have to look at this 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 first. It, it's it's hard. It really is. Because the year you get past the District 8 teams, which Sequatchie County did, they got past. They got past. They didn't win the region. They didn't win that region in the year. They lost to Livingston in the finals. But that still gets you to sectionals. The year that you be a District 8 team, you go and you play a Chattanooga team, they're insanely good. Howard, good team. I don't even know. I, I I didn't look it up. I think they didn't make it even make it out of the state champion or out of the state tournament, uh, first round of the state tournament. I don't think they did. You know, I, I'm just like, huh? 
You know, and they beat Sequatchie County that year. And that year, they were destined to go far. They were destined to go far. And, and they just... And, and and they got past District 8. They finally got past District 8. Couldn't get past Chattanooga teams. And see, last year when Bledsoe County, if Bledsoe County and Notre Dame had got past the District 8 teams, which they didn't, they would have been derailed by Central. They would have been derailed by Brainerd, who both teams in their own right were great teams, and I think that would have just been a year that you know you're. It's almost like for District Seven AA, you're never going to get to the state championship, basically because you go through District Eight, you win District Eight, you have to play Chattanooga team, and then it's up in the air, and you 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 know chances are you're not going to get past the Chattanooga team and a District Eight team. That's just not in the cards. You know, Sequatchie County is a dark horse uh, in the, in this district, District Seven AA, I believe. Uh, and Grundy County, by the way, I just I hadn't seen enough of them in basketball, to be honest. I think girls and boys both had a new coach. Uh, I was reading uh, the uh, preview, 7 double preview for both boys and girls by Anthony Sigismund, a good friend of mine from River City Sports. Go check that out if you get a chance. Um, and, and we were just talking about, you know, how – we were just talking about how uh, – we actually drove up to Hampton Friday night, and we got to talking. It's about a four-hour drive, so we did a lot of talking on the way up there just about sports. You know, he was saying, you know, all these coaches he talked to, he interviewed all these coaches, and they said, who's the team you got to look out for? Every one of them. Oh, you always got to look out for Sequatchie County. You always got to look out for Sequatchie County. What's that mean? No, they're not a good, they're not a, a superb team. They're not a team that's going to come in there and just, boom, they're going to beat you. Uh, on the boys' side, anyway. They're, just, they're, they're, they're inconsistent. They're inconsistent. Ever since that, uh, that uh, year, with Dakota Hudson, or not Dakota Hudson, but Daniel Cartwright. I think Dakota Hudson was on that team anyways. Dakota Hudson, Daniel Cartwright, Keegan Frazier. Ever since that year, they've just been inconsistent. They had twenty. They went 29-4. 29-4 that season. 29-4. Couldn't get the state tournament. Lost their last two games. They went on a 27-game win streak, which is unheard of in, call, in, in high school basketball. Tito Blitz about high school basketball, especially for a bunch of white kids, but especially for a Valley team, a rural school like that, to just go undefeated like that. Unheard of. A uh, 27-game win streak like that. Unheard of. And I'm sorry if I was a little bit politically incorrect there when I said white kids, but we are white kids. <laughs> Not to say that... Uh, not to say the black kids are any, any any better or any worse. You know, it's just kind of these connotations you get. I think people get too politically correct these days, honestly, with that kind of thing. Still love everybody. That's what you got to do. But you, you just don't see a, a bunch of a bunch of white kids doing that anymore. And and the team they've got this year, they got Barrett Lawson, Braden Lawson, the Twin Towers. You've got um. You got Noah Bartley, who's a pretty good player. You got Ethan Nunley, who is one of two seniors on there with uh, Gavin uh, Ledford. Um, but you also have uh, Al Hudson, who's who's an experienced point guard. He's been in the playing since he was like a freshman or sophomore, and he's a I think he's been playing since he was a freshman, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but but he just he just they they just they they have the talent to be consistent, but they're not consistent. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. Um, and I think there'll be a dark horse. On the girls' side, you've got Jennifer Thulkin, Ireland Birch in the paint, and you got Jordan Smith on the outside. You also got a freshman, Brittany Singleton. And, and if Ron Davis stays for about three more years, I think they can make a serious run. Now, the boys will have a better chance at that just because there's a – and I'll talk about this in a second. There's a bigger gap with the girls. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But with the boys, uh, with a bigger gap of the girls than there is the boys, but I think they can make a run, at least a region run. I, I just, they're just not up to the challenge this year. I think they can be eventually, but not this year. I think next year or the year after that would be the year that they're going to look to be successful. Van Buren County. State tournament last year. Boys went to state tournament last year. Girls hosted sectionals. A lot of success going through that program. A lot of people tell me that's all they got to do out there is basketball. Really? You're going there? You're going You're going there. Oh, Spencer, Tennessee, all they have out there is basketball. They don't have anything else. Have you drove, driven out there? Yeah, I have. They don't even have a two, they don't even have a, all they have is two-lane roads. They don't even have a red light. Maybe not, but they got a four-lane road going right through the town. They've got talent out the wazoo. 
they got players that play AU in the summer in the spring and compete and compete nationally, compete statewide, and they do an excellent job. I saw Caden Mills this offseason. Caden Mills, uh, the leading scorer last night in that game against Whitwell, they played. And, uh, by the way, that game recap is on River City Sports. If you get a chance to look at that up, Van Buren County. Cade Mills had 23 points last night. That's not that's not impressive for Cade Mills anyway. But he was he was going he went to the CABC league here in the Vol, which had all the top players from Chattanooga, all the top players from Chattanooga, and he was number two in scoring. I can't remember who number one was. He was number two in scoring against all these you know kids from the city that were you know just ballers. And you think oh Chattanooga they've got these inner city teams you know and they're, they're just gonna they're just gonna whoop some butt. But here comes Caden Mills. He comes in there. Boom, boom. I want to beat you. White kid balling out. White kid balling out. That's Caden Mills. Lakeland Bolden last night injured her ankle. She's fine. She'll get past him. She's tough-minded. But Van Buren County, I think with, with Van Buren County, you got to look at the boys are going to have more success just because there's a big gap. And what I mean by that is last year, Van Buren is, uh, <laughs> you know, Van Buren, they, they lost by 30 points in the sectionals last year. The boys lost by 10 in the state tournament. You know, that was to Pickett County, by the way. The girls lost to Pickett County, and they were 28-5. and 28-5 and five last year, and they lost by 30 points. Ball out, you know, basketball at Middle Tennessee is just better. It's just how it is. And they played Pickett County. They, I think they played Pickett County. Superb girls team. I, I don't even think they won state, though. Superb. I watched them. They were just flawless. They didn't win state. They beat Van Buren County. And Van Buren County around here is a big name. And we talk about Van Buren County basketball, girls basketball. It Now it comes to the stigma of they're the best. The boys come with the stigma. They're the best in the district. Although I think Marion County might be able to contend. We'll see here in a few weeks how they do. I don't think Van Buren County boys are, are complete yet or are back to being complete yet. But they're pretty close to it. I mean, They've got a lot of work to do. I, I think they lost that senior, lost the leadership. Caden Mills and Drew Roberts are going to have to get in. The, they're going to lead that team. And I don't know. I mean, they're used to leading the team, but Caden Mills still a sophomore, still a sophomore. Okay, and he's going to be the leading player on that team along with Drew Roberts. And I think they're still getting into the zone of look. We've got to lead this team. We got to make sure this team goes in the right direction because the coach can only do so much. You know how that goes. I think Marion County is the most underrated team. And, and, and the reason why I say this is, one, because they still have football players playing in the state championship. I think once the state championship is over, you'll see their their true greatness. And, and two, <laughs> and, and two, you look over and you got Logan Walters. you got Bryce Baskett. Logan Walters is a triathlete. I mean, he's probably going to go somewhere in baseball before he goes somewhere in football. I mean, it's just it just amazes me, amazes me. It just amazes me how good he is on the court. Now, I will say this: Whitwell and Grundy County, I think they get lost in the mix. Whitwell will be a good, will be a solid team. I think South Pittsburgh will be a solid team. Um, or Whitwell will be a solid team once the season's over. I mean, I saw the Whitwell's girl team. I think they're a little bit underrated. I saw them go up against Van Buren County last night. And beside, if you had done the the three quarters after the first quarter, if 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 you had not counted the first quarter, it would have been a close game. I think Whitwell actually would have won. Looking at the stat sheet. We will actually would have won that game, and that that's unheard of. I think Whitwell's going a little bit underrated, or I think yeah, they're a little bit underrated. Boys, not so much. I think they're right where they need to be. Paris, he's on a team that just it's not built for this yet. It's not built to win yet, and, and they have a first year head coach. So I, I'm not doubting anybody. I'm just saying, look, you you can't expect them to win now. It's just not how it goes. That's not what it is, you know. And, and they'll eventually get there. I think they will. Because uh, they, they're a basketball team with the mentality that R.C. Helton, the head football coach, if you've never met him, he's a great guy, uh, very monotone, uh, very monotone, uh, fundamental football coach. He's got to go out there and he's got to say this, he's got to say that. This team is the best team I've ever seen in my life, and we're going to win state. We're going to win state. We're going to beat South Pittsburgh. Love coach R.C. Helton. He's a, he's a character. But, you know, talking about basketball, I don't think Will was there. Now, Grundy County, they've both got a new head coach. Girls and boys both have a new head coach. It's just going to be one of those things where you look at and you're like, <sighs> you feel sorry for them almost. You feel sorry for them. I mean, it's just because they're they're in a district where they can't. 
win that much. I mean, they can, but they're not going to win as much as they should. Um, you know, and, and I think they've got some good athletes. On the girls' side, they've got some great athletes. On the boys' side, they have some average athletes, I believe. I hadn't seen them play yet, so I can't really speculate. But from what I've seen in the past and what I see going in this year, I think that's that'll be the case. Um, but, you know, that that's just how it goes in uh, in basketball. But, um, you know, extra point tonight, today, whatever. I, I can't see outside. There's not a window where I am. I can't see that. Uh, but extra point for the day, Hampton. I, I feel sorry for Hampton. Hampton is, is the team that Marion County beat 55-7, pummeled, okay? Why do I feel sorry for them? One, they're 13-0, and they lost their first game against Marion County. I'm always, I'm always, uh, I am always like to see an undefeated team. I always like to see zero, the goose egg. And they lost to Marion County, 55-7. Second thing, you know, I was talking to the to the radio guy, one of the radio producers for Marion County's radio, and he was a he's a pastor, and he was a pastor in the Hampton community for a while. And so he was telling me about the history of the Hampton community. It used to be big in textile and coal. Uh, a while back, back in the 80s, 90s, they lost textile, couldn't get that back. A couple of years ago, with Obama's regulations, they lost coal mining. In a day, half the community lost their job. This is what he told me. Half the community lost their job. And, and, God. and, and he said, football's all I have. It, because Hampton, by the way, Hampton's in the mountains, in, in the mountains of uh, the Appalachians. It's like being, uh, it was like being a Marincane because there were mountains surround, there were mountains continuously surrounding us, all around us. And so it was like we didn't even leave Marion County almost. Uh, I mean, of course, it's a four-hour drive. I know that. But, you know, that, that's just something you got to feel sorry for is Hampton. I mean, that's just how it goes. Uh, you, you you win some, you lose some. And I think Marion County was just the better team. And I think Hampton – Hampton didn't have a chance in that game. And I thought coming into it, Hampton would give them a great battle just because of their record, just because of the stigma that came with them. But they didn't have anything for Marion County. And I, I was kind of sad for them that they didn't. But, you know, that's how it goes in football. Uh, I'm just I, I'm I'm excited to see Marion County in the state championship. I am. But uh hats off to you, Hampton, for a great season. Thirteen and one. Not many teams can say they, they laid a, a goose egg in their loss column into the semifinals of the state championship game uh, the semifinals of the state playoffs. Not many people can say that. Uh but this is December second, twenty fifteen, a Wednesday. This is the Sting of the South podcast. And uh we're about to leave for the day. But I do, I do want to leave a little tidbit. I found this sound by the other day. I just want to play it. I just don't know why. I just want to put this in in, in my in my show. It's just a hilarious uh, sound bite. I tried this one chili and it set my mouth on fire and I had to drink a two liter of Mountain Dew. I laugh every time I hear that sound bite. I just want to put that in there. I don't know why. It has nothing to do with sports. Unless you're a competitive eater. I guess. I don't know. But this has been the Stake of the South Podcast. I'm Chandler Morrison. We'll see you at a later date.